next. Tragedy strikes. Accidents happen. Be there when the calls come in. It's back-to-back -back episodes of Rescue 911. Next on Discovery Health Channel. Today on Rescue 911, panic in the night. Oh, came in as a burglary in progress. A deaf woman and her children face an armed intruder. And I told my son, there is a man here. Please help me. Witness a narrow escape for help as her children lay unprotected in bed. Rescue 911. There are few things more frightening than facing a crisis with your children. I'm William Shatner. Tonight, true stories of life or death battles and races against time on Rescue 911. We begin in Chattanooga, Tennessee on the evening of October 25th, 1989. For the Armour family, almost everything in life is harder. Both Annette and her husband Larry are deaf. They can neither call for help when they're in trouble nor hear any sounds of approaching danger. Annette's husband was visiting a friend that night, leaving her alone in the house with her three small children. She gave them baths, put them to bed, then went to sleep herself in her daughter's bed. The call came in as a burglary in progress. I think they gave some information about a man was seen in the house, which, of course, causes your heart to race just a little bit. His intent wasn't to steal the television. With the rope, the knives, and his actions, put it bluntly, I believe he was in there to uh, rape Miss Arm. went through to the kitchen, or acting almost like a blind man or something, almost like he was drunk. It just really scared me to death. I don't understand why he didn't follow me. It was, it was at night, you know, and maybe he couldn't see me. I woke up my son, and I you know, told my son, there is a man here in the house. Please help me. We saw this man that was in my kitchen, and he was by the refrigerator. I told my son, come on, let's go, just be quiet. With no phone, Annette was forced to leave the house to try to get help, taking her five-year-old son, Larry, as her interpreter. I was wondering about the man. I hope he don't do anything to my kids. And I was very nervous. If I had woke them up, they would have been crying. And I was afraid that, that would have made the man come after us. Mm. I just didn't mean to leave my kids there for them to get any harm. 
when we continue. Your first instinct is, of course, to rush right in and try to protect children. But at the same time, you've got to use what you've been taught. Okay. Follow unsung heroes saving lives and witness courage and compassion in action. Okay, I'll be in the back. I'm going to be in the back of the ambulance waiting for you. Paramedics, next on Discovery Health Channel. I wanted to call the police to come and get this man so my kids would be safe. I didn't want to lose any one of my kids. They're my family. The only neighbor Annette knew was the woman across the street, Odessa Ray. Must have been around uh, 1.30. We heard someone knocking at our back door. And uh, around here, you just don't ever get up and open the door. You're going to see first who it is. I knew right away something bad was wrong, you know, because that time of night and all. What's wrong with it? You can tell when anybody's in trouble. You can tell, you know, by their actions or motions. And she told me she was asleep and that she woke up and uh, he was standing over her. And so I just dialed 911. 911 emergency. Can I help you? I needed to hurry up and get the police started on something like that. So I disconnected with her. Operator Sharon Feathers quickly passed the information to the dispatcher. I sort of put myself in that situation that if that was my children I'd had to flee from and leave in a house with a stranger, the terror that I would be going through. And you try to alleviate that terror as fast as you can. I was wondering what might happen, what he might do, if he might, might kill one of them. I know it was tough on her leaving her two little kids. She's foolish about her kids. I mean, she's really a good mother. Hello? Ma'am, this is the police department. Is that lady still there with you? Yes, yeah, she is. She couldn't give you any kind of description at all about the guy or anything? Her little boy said he was, he was uh, black. Ask the little boy if he knows the man. Is he there where you can talk to him? Yes. Uh, you want me to step in and talk to you? Yeah, let me talk to him. Okay, wait just a minute. Okay. Uh, hey, can you help me a little bit? Do you know that man that's in your house? Uh -huh. You do know him? Is no. He, you don't know him? Okay, did he break in the front door or something? No. How old are you? Five. You're five? Yeah. Okay. Do you know, is your, is your baby brother somebody in the house? My, my sister or my baby brother in the house? Your sister and your baby brother are in the house. Okay, where's that man at that's in your house? You know? Where'd you see him at? In my kitchen. He's in the kitchen? I instantly told Tim. I didn't even wait. He dispatched that out to the officers where the man was last seen. Then I stressed the point, did you know the man? You never had seen him before? The little boy assured me that they did not know this person. Officers Stone and Ganaway arrived at the scene. Unfortunately, they don't give us uh, anybody to tell who the good people are and who the bad people are on a call. So the more information, you know, the, as far as description or where they were last seen, is essential, it's very important. Okay, I found the point of entry, got a broken window on the side of the house. Your first instinct is, of course, to rush right in and try to protect children. But at the same time, you've got to use the procedures and you have to use what you've been taught. The car's going in. Five has seen movement inside. Lieutenant Fusen went to the left to secure that area, and myself and Officer Ganaway uh, approached the kitchen. 
Officer Stone looked into the kitchen, and I could tell by the look on his face that he saw somebody behind the refrigerator. When we first saw him, we weren't sure what kind of weapons he might have. So my main focus at that time was just to secure the subject. Stand up. Fire. The suspect was ordered several times to keep his hands visible. I don't know if it was uh, drug-induced sluggishness or just his general mental state, but he was pretty sluggish. I then noticed that one of the children was behind him in a bedroom. If this suspect had suddenly decided that uh, he either did not want to be placed in custody or tried to harm one of us, that that child was about as close into my direct line of fire as, as it could be. This hand. We began searching him and noticed uh, two sections of rope about a foot and a half long each that were in his pockets. We also found three butcher knives, which he had concealed in his boots. The rest of the house was searched. When it was found to be clear, they turned all the lights on. And by that time, other officers had come in and uh, they were with the children. I felt very relieved that there was no, no harm done to my children. And the police said, you are very lucky. And I said, oh, I am. I am very lucky. The man arrested at the scene was found incompetent to stand trial. Three months later, the Armour family still has not forgotten the events of that night. I was afraid, and I went run home to see my wife, see what had happened. And I asked my wife, are you hurt? And she said no, but she was safe because my son had called the police in 911. And I was very thankful that my son had helped my wife. And I'm very proud of my son, Larry, for what he did. Had he not been with her, I don't think that anyone would have understood what, what her problem was, because I think he did a fairly good job of interpreting was able to communicate with a neighbor and give us additional information that we needed. With the help of several local organizations, the Armour family was able to get their first telephone, including a TDD unit specially designed for the deaf. The TDD is really the only window to the world for some of these families who are hearing impaired. They can communicate with the TDD just like you and I can with the telephone if there's a receiver on the other end. And in our community, we're fortunate in having these terminals on the other end at law enforcement office, the medical center, so that they can call 911. I am so happy about this. My son, he almost got wild, too. I had to calm him down and say, oh, now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't, you can't be calling grandmother all the time and because uh, my relatives don't live here. They be long distance. I'm so, so proud of him. He is a real smart boy. He is teaching the other two sign language, too. I love him so much. Not just one, but all of them, all three of my kids. Next. Next, step inside the command center where the calls for help are answered and meet the real-life heroes who save lives. Stay tuned for another episode of Rescue 911. Next on Discovery Health Channel. Real life. Medicine. Miracles. Mr. Shapiro, step out of the car, please.